Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellblight here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Samira's appearance in her trailer has given a lot of people cause for alarm, as a lot of people have been saying Samira is potentially too good. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to evaluate new champions and how to evaluate rework champions and sort of how to think about them when they do come out, as I think the hype around Samira is dramatically overstated. Now, a lot of people have already been creating the memes on Twitter and all sorts of other places saying, oh yeah, Riot, 200 years, look at how this champion plays versus how a champion that's been around ten, since 10 years ago, like Udyr plays. Look at all the text in her passive versus the text in someone else's passive, like Dr. Mundo or Nasus. like, oh my god, the, how broken is this champion? How dumb are Riot? And I think that's a little bit unfair to, to give Riot a little bit unfair standard to hold them to for a few reasons. Now, first and foremost, and I don't know that I have to address this, but I'm going to anyways just to make sure, gameplay trailers are not designed to actually represent gameplay of any characters. They are basically designed to create hype by staging very scripted events, by saying, hey, look at this character style on everybody, don't you want to play them? It's an advertisement more than anything else, and it should not be ever treated as if that's actual gameplay. So if you guys are already trying to go off that for your memes, I'm sorry, I think you are um, a little overstating your case there because I don't think that works quite at all. I mean, even if you guys think about the PsyOps trailer that came out today, a the Sona in that trailer tanks like two full Victor combos and then one shots him. That n would never happen in any actual game. So anyways, moving on to the actual point here. First and foremost, the amount of text on an ability is not indicative of the ability's actual strength. If you think about, for example, allow E. That ability has a lot of text describing exactly how it's used, what happens, what are the possible implications of this ability can be. There's a lot going on with that spell, but nobody in particular looked at Alawi's E and said, wow, that champion's totally broken, look how much text her E has, because they sort of understood that, like, yeah, there's a lot of text on it, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. In a similar fashion, Jin and Graves have very long passes, but that's because their auto attacks function in very unique ways that the game has to basically describe to you exactly how it is they work because they have a different relationship with things like attack speed, critical strike chance, that sort of a thing. You, so you have to have a longer passive to describe these champions' connections with these stats and exactly how they work together. I shouldn't have to say this, but Aphelios passive is the same deal. That champion works in a completely different way from every other champion in the game, so naturally has a longer passive to make sure that players understand that this character, you can't even just press buttons on him like you would another champion. You really have to think about how Aphelios is different from these champions. So the amount of text on an ability is not indicative of strength. It's basically just trying to explain everything that this champion can do. And in the case of Samira, all of her quote-unquote four passives are different abilities and sort of different things. They're all very small effects as well. So she gets bonus damage in melee range. That's not a tremendous effect. That's not a huge passive. I wouldn't even say that's a passive on its own. Style meter would be the only thing to me that says this It could be a passive on its own. But the passive auto attack and the extra damage in melee range exist there for a design reason, which we'll get to here in a sec. Speaking of designs, though, design creep is a thing. Not necessarily power creep, though power creep does exist in League of Legends to a certain extent, as it does with every game. There's no way around it. Design creep is just in games by default. There's only so much you can do with existing designs before you have to start pushing into different space and finding different effects you can give champions. You kind of can't give champions old passives like Riot used to do, where Nasus has 12% innate lifesteal or whatever it is. You can't do those anymore because, well, the design space just isn't there anymore. You've already used it for these older champions. So you can't really just keep creating champions with this champion has bo boosted lifesteal, this champion has boosted health regen, because, well, another champion already has that. And if you're trying to say, well, that wouldn't be a problem, we could double up on passives, players were actively angry with Riot when they released Aatrox and Zac back-to-back, both of whom were champions with revived passives. Even though those revived passives worked in completely different ways, even though the champions had two completely different playstyles, people were legitimately mad at Riot for releasing these champions back-to-back. -back. So imagine how much worse it had been if those champions had the exact same passive, for example, or if someone said, hey, let's make a champion with just innate lifesteal, the same thing as Nasus. Players would not be very happy. So you have to come up with different designs as the game continues to be developed. There's just no way around it. So they have to push into more interesting Interesting territory and I don't think that's a bad thing I do think it means they have to be very careful in order to make sure that champions don't end up in a broken state but there are ways for Riot to kind of say 
hey, well, we have to do different things with our champions as we move forward. And that's kind of where Samira does end up. Now, specifically in regards to evaluating a new champion's or rework champion's strength, I think it's possible to look at their strengths for sure. You can definitely look at a champion and say, wow, that looks like it's going to do a ton of damage, or wow, that looks like it's going to be a really difficult ability to dodge. But I think it's also safe to look at possible weaknesses of the champion instead of just saying, wow, look at all the places in which they're strong. So for Samira, for example, yes, she looks like she has a ton of mobility. She has some pretty good cleanup potential, pretty good team fighting potential. But on the flip side, her ultimate damage is fairly low unless she's able to get a full channel off. It also resets her style meter, which resets one of her biggest safety tools, which is all the bonus movement speed it grants her. She's very low ranged, which means that she has to play on sort of a nice edge as a lot of champions like Vayne and Lucian do. And Vayne and Lucian, at the very least, Vayne has not been a champion that a lot of people have been able to play because of how risky she is and how difficult she can be to play. Lucian, meanwhile, has seen some success, but his low range does mean he has some risks. Especially, it means that he has to be careful with where he uses his mobility spells, because otherwise he'll get blown up. And Samira does not have a free targeted mobility spell like Lucian does. She can only dash to minions or allies, or enemies potentially, which means that if she gets caught in the middle of a lane with no wave, well, she has no way out. She also has the tension from her passive. And this is why I like these lines of text on the passive, because they say, basically, Samira does bonus damage in melee range. This means that Samira now has a choice. If she closes the gap with an enemy to try and benefit more from that boosted melee damage, she's exposing herself to even more harm than a regular AD carry would. I can even think of when Quinn and Valor first came out, and people were looking at their ultimate and saying, why would you ever use this? You have to go into melee range as an AD carry for your ultimate? Like, that's actively bad. And Samira is in a similar boat. She has to be very careful with how she actually decides to approach fights, because if she does close to melee range, she's in a very risky spot because of how AD carries itemize and because of how glass cannon they tend to be. It also means that if she does try to play at maximum range, like Lucian and Vayne, that she does run the risk of just not doing as much damage and not being as effective or as efficient as these other champions can be. Especially, it's sort of like, okay, if you're just going to play her safely DPSing from a range, why wouldn't you just pick Caitlyn? You have to pick Samira because you expect to be taking her into melee range, you expect to be trying to get the ultimate reset, E-reset, pop-off team fights that you really want. The other thing she's got, too, is a lot of people are talking about, okay, well, she's got that ultimate reset potential. Her ultimate's a very low cooldown, but it's gated behind the S style meter, and it costs 100 mana at first rank, which, since she only has 500 mana at level 6, it means that if she's been casting abilities throughout the laning phase, she probably won't have ability for her ultimate, and even if she does, she has to be able to stack up to her ultimate, which means unique auto attacks or spell hits, which means that she kind of sort of has to use her whole kit in order to get to the S rank in order to press R. So, there are a lot of ways to sort of prevent Samira from getting to those points if you realize she's starting to beat you up and build up that style meter it's probably possible to just back away and wait for the combo to drop off and then Samira doesn't have the ability to ult in a team fight where she needs to and because of how long her cooldowns are there's quite a big window where she is punishable in these regards so in general I feel like there are a lot of weaknesses to these champ to this champion that aren't really being talked about because oh haha ha, funny meme look how her text is so much longer than Udyr's text even though it's not relevant to the balance conversation at hand. But either way, those are just kind of my thoughts on Samira. I know it's funny. I know this is just supposed to be memes and everyone always makes fun of the new champions, but I really hope people aren't taking them seriously because I don't think Samira is going to be incredibly powerful. I don't think she's going to be the kind of champion that comes out and is just completely broken. But those are just my thoughts. So if you guys think I'm completely wrong, let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts, especially if you have reasons why you think Samira is going to be as good as everyone's making her out to be. Would love to hear those. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.